A uh, couple of notes to pass along here. One, the uh, tournament of bands that uh, Martinsburg hosted, I guess it was this uh, over, the, over the weekend here, uh, Colin informs me that that is now up on our, uh, is it the YouTube uh, channel? Yes, he said the YouTube channel that's up and going. So if you wanted to watch that, if you had kids in the band or you're just interested in uh, watching the performances there, you can check that out on our WNR TV 10 Martinsburg YouTube channel. And also, any th- anytime we do a program here uh, at the end of the show, Colin, if it's Dylan's day to produce, they sh- uh, carve up the individual segments and post those on that YouTube uh, channel as well. So if you missed the show live, you can check it out, the inter- individual components of the show that way. And between 4 and 6 each day back here on the radio, this entire show is replayed live on AM 740 and FM 106.5. William, good morning. Back to you again. Good morning, Rob. It's great to be here. Interesting guest today, as always. Yes. Uh, and uh, also, uh, thanks to Mary Sue Boyd at the Dreamy Bee Bakery for whipping up this uh, uh, dozen brownies that uh, candidate Joe Funkhauser brought in, uh, causing a member of our audience to say they should change the name of this show to Panhandler Live as much as they beg for food. And I just want to state for the record, we don't beg for food. It's, it's demanded now. We're past the begging stage, Bill. It's in the contract. If you show up here in the studio, you have to have food with you. It's part of the contract. But I still think the panhandling uh, for food is justified. I believe yeah. it is, Bill. <laughs> and so our audience is always very perceptive on our our request, not necessarily our needs. No, they request. don't care about our needs whatsoever, but uh, they'll, they'll, they'll bring it if they have to. Our and I'm, I'm looking at those brownies. I'm yes. uh, one's gone from the middle, and we know David Anderson. I'm yes. looking very close to see if a second one has disappeared. No, no, <laughs> I, I don't eat during the show. It's pretty, it's pretty rare that I eat anything during the show. Uh, Emmett Pepper is our guest. He is the policy director for uh, EEV, uh, EEWV, and uh, he joins us via telephone. Emmett, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us, sir. Good morning. I really appreciate you having me on. And EEWV is Energy Efficient West Virginia, by the way. Yeah, Emmett, I realize you're not in the audience, but did you consider sending food? <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I really regret I'm not up there today. Yeah. You know, so I could bring you some brownies or something. Yeah, well, that would, uh, you know, next time. Just, yeah, it doesn't or, have to be this time, but or, next time. Or just send, uh, send them with DoorDash, <laughs> or there are several uh, well, that's vehicles true. you can do. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to be here to, sh- to send us food. Yeah. That's- Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. The Public Service Commission recently approved a significant settlement that doubled annual spending on energy efficiency initiatives for American Electric Power customers. West Virginians for Energy Freedom Coalition members, including the West Virginia Citizen Action Group, Solar United Neighbors, and Energy Efficient West Virginia applaud the decision and comment uh, and have commented on how it will benefit West Virginia residents across the AEP service area. And Emmett, if you could... Uh, tell our audience why they should care about this and how it's going to benefit them. Well, um, unfortunately, um, I have bad news in that regard. I mean, yeah, so this this benefits all AEP service uh, territories, which are in uh, the uh, southern part of the state, mm-hmm. as well as the northern district or the northern uh, panhandle, and um, a part of it. And uh, so, unfortunately, because you are in a Potomac Edison uh, ter- service territory. Uh, those programs are not available to you, and it's, it is especially unfortunate because your utilities have not proposed such programs. Uh, in the past, we've worked with them uh, to have these, these sort of programs available, and um, there's an opportunity, I think, over the coming year or so, um, year and a half, when uh, the, uh, you know, the planning happens for the next five years, um, for, you know, for, to have a conversation about why doesn't Potomac Edison on this side of the, of the river have um, you know have these kind of opportunities for people to reduce their energy costs uh, while, while it's available across the river. Now, this, uh, this this recent decision is really good news for the folks it does affect. Though um, we've uh, it's more than doubled, uh, as you said, the energy efficiency program. So these are these are rebates available. Uh, there's some of them are uh, targeted towards low income folks. Some of them are targeted to small businesses. Um, and the main the kind of core program uh, that that is available is that if, if somebody uh, is an AEP customer um, at, wants to is concerned about their bills and they they can call a company up and they'll uh, send somebody over that the utility pays for and uh, have, they'll come walk through your house give you some specific pointers that are specific to your house about how you can reduce some energy costs and things that may not be obvious to the 
you know, the layperson. And then they'll give you some energy-efficient light bulbs, give you some insulation for uh, pipes and things like that. And then, uh, and then you can kind of start your journey to kind of addressing the energy costs. Um, like uh, Potomac Edison customers are, um, are, are so I'm an ATP customer, full disclosure, mm-hmm. uh, our energy rates have, um, have gone up quite a bit in the past 15 years. They've gone up a little bit more down here. They've uh, more than doubled down here, but they have uh, also gone up for folks up there, as you know. Yeah, so when, I, when this uh, press release came across my desk, uh, obviously I recognize the fact that the folks around here aren't customers of this uh, of this energy supplier. But it begs the question, as you mentioned, uh, if it can be done and offered by one energy supplier, why can't it be offered by another? Well, the answer is it could be, because you know, um, Potomac Edison, as you, as you probably know, uh, have customers on the West Virginia side and have customers on the Maryland side. Yes, I'm, I'm a customer of Potomac Edison, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. And so on the Maryland side, if, if, you, if you live across the river, there's going to be uh, a lot of opportunities for saving energy uh, through, through, the, through programs of the utility. But there's um, very little um, um, on the uh, on the West. How is the savings implemented? In, in other words, as a customer, do I get a choice to have to check a box and say yes, I'd like some of my energy to come from this, or is just an automatic uh, deduction in my price uh, that I'm going to see? No, so what it would be is I mean, these are actual helping your your building or your home or your uh, office become more efficient. So having uh, you know, there are rebates available to help make it easier for you to. Switch to a uh, more you know more efficient heat pump. Uh, r- rebates available for um, you know uh, getting insulation, those sorts of things. So um, and uh, this is you know and this these programs have been around for a long time for AEP, uh, but they've they have not included for a few years uh, small businesses. So we're really pleased to see that. That's something you know it, it can hurt uh, our ability to, to keep and retain businesses or for businesses to succeed. Because, you know, most businesses are not in the business of, uh, you know, monitoring closely their electric bill. Um, but this is a, a way for, you know, this makes it a little bit easier for them to kind of like turn their attention to that and then get back to focusing on things that they do. I actually live across the river in Maryland, yeah. and yeah. I get these offers in my bill every single month. If, if you replace your old refrigerator with a more energy efficient one, you're, you can get up to $75 or whatever the dollar amount might be. Is, is this similar to that, is that, or is that basically what this is? That's exactly what it is, yeah. And, and Maryland is one of the top, you know, they're, they're the people who rank these things uh, nationally, uh, Maryland is one of the top five states in the country to help, you know, helping people become more energy efficient and, and meeting you know, the energy needs of our customers through becoming more efficient, not just you know, producing more energy. Uh, and West Virginia, unfortunately, is one of the, t- the bottom five. So is, is there a sp- specific reason you've been able to determine why it's not being offered in West in this part of West Virginia but other parts? Uh, yeah, well, two, two things. One is, you know, one difference between, you know, one side of the river and the other. Maryland, uh, the Maryland legislature requires these, these sorts of things. Um, so our legislature has not required them, but that doesn't mean that they can't be implemented. Uh, however, uh, you know, the AEP uh, subsidiaries in West Virginia, Appalachian Power, Wheeling Power, um, AEP has, a, as part of its business model, sees that there's a benefit to this. Uh, this is good for their customers. This is good for, you know, being able to collect bills and, and those sorts of things. Uh, First Energy that owns um, Stomach Edison and Mom Power in West Virginia uh, hasn't seen it that way. Bill? <laughs> Yeah. They just fast for it. Yeah. Good morning, uh, uh, Emmett. Uh, what's the cost, uh, the the price differential between what we as a resident of Eastern Panhandle pay as compared to other parts of the state on a average monthly bill? Uh, I I think it's about twenty dollars or so. Um, I can uh, I should have had that pulled up, but. Um, but yeah, it's it's about. I think it's in. The, we're up to about one hundred and ninety dollars a month is the average electric bill. Um, and, and that is that deferential it, twenty dollars deferential is a direct product of the fact that First Energy and uh, Potomac Edison are not part of this program. No, I wouldn't say that. Um, okay, so I found it here. It's um, it's about fifty dollars a month. I, you know, there's uh, there's two parts of the equation, right? Um, and um, one part of the equation is how much energy, how much your rates are, and then the other part is how much 
you know, energy use. And actually, I don't have I don't have off the top of my head. Uh, I probably couldn't get it quickly. Uh, you know, the actual bill average. You know, based on both parts of that. Um, but what the PSC, the Public Service Commission, compiles is, you know, based on, you know, a hypothetical, which is actually a little low, but about right, uh, 1,000 kilowatt hours a month, average bill, um, how much would it be? And so it's about $170 for AEP customers and about $120, $125 for uh, First Energy, you know, Potomac Edison customers in West Virginia. Fair enough. Uh, if, if, if your bill is that, that amount. But, you know, if somebody is wanting to do something about it uh, to actually reduce their energy costs, um, it's, it makes it uh, harder to, um, you know, having some programs in place to help assist that makes it smoother for folks, especially the low-income folks. It's really, you know, finding the upfront um, help is, is a challenge. So there's a uh, cost advantage uh, for those those people involved that whose programs are involved in this program, uh, who's involved that's, that's in this program. Right. Yeah, yeah it, it, there is a benefit to them. I mean, the difference between you know the cost per kilowatt hour is negligible in terms of one place to another whether or not you have these programs. But I should mention when we recently just finished you know, a few months ago um, a very long case for the rates for uh, Potomac Edison and Mon Power. Um, and, you know, in that case, there was a, a really big uh, you know, fight, I guess I should say, or uh, dispute about um, how people can go solar and um, net metering, which is the policy that allows people to get credit for the excess power that goes back to the, uh, to the grid. And um, that's another way people can reduce their energy costs. Uh, there was a proposal to cut that in half, the amount of credit people get, um, we were able to come up with a reasonable compromise that, uh, you know, kind of in the middle there. And also we're in actually at the point right now, if folks have been wanting to go solar, they probably need to sign up right about now because I think uh, at the beginning of the year, if they don't have their ducks in a row and all the paperwork into the utility, they're not going to be able to get the uh, one-to-one credit that everybody has, you know, everybody who's signed up for solar so far has, has had an opportunity. Yeah. yeah, there is a comment in our Facebook section from a fellow asking the question. I'm hearing that Potomac Edison will cap solar payback to homeowners or businesses in 2025. Is that essentially what you're saying, Emmett? That's right. Yeah. So what? It, so for for uh, residential customers, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be uh, cut down from about I think the current uh, rate for Potomac Edison is about 13 cents, give or take. I could be wrong on that. Um, they would be down to about nine cents. Uh, starting on January one, uh, if you've gotten, if you get your, if you get your paperwork in before the end of the year, then you can be grandfathered in under the kind of thirteen cents give or take um, uh, uh, credits. But as a solar user, uh, which I am, uh, I do not have to submit paperwork every year, do I? Once I've submitted the paperwork, it's only one time. No, so, yeah, this is this is for the this is for folks who. Uh, you haven't don't have solar yet, and they're wanting to sign up. But if you if you already have yours, uh, and you're in West Virginia, Potomac Edison, you're you're good. You're going to be grandfathered in for um, several. I think it's 20 years um, for some a, a long time. And we we uh, you know one of the things we advocated for on that is you know if you sell your house, you know there was a concern that well the next customer doesn't get the same benefit, even though there's been the investment made and it ha- you know hasn't really. You know, they're still working on making its money back. That, regardless of who owns it, whoever's at that meter gets the benefit for, I believe it is, 20 years. Uh, Emmett, there's been a lot of controversy in the state uh, about Nucor and the the batteries that they are going to produce. Uh, Once these very robust batteries come online and our local energy companies start utilizing it, will that result in a cost saving to the customer? I, I was uh, so this is getting a little bit outside. Of, I know a lot more about you know my, our focus is on West Virginia's for energy freedom and energy efficient West Virginia is to really focus on the the customer, you know, empowering the customer to either produce or reduce their own energy to meet their own energy needs, having batteries that they own. So you know these kind of utility scale batteries, I'm not as familiar with, but but yeah, I mean I think you know to the extent that we can um, not have to because there's obviously there's ups and downs of demand. And if we can, you know, not have to the most expensive power during the peak times, and we can 
battery backup for that, whether it's owned by utilities or owned by customers, that's a good thing. You know, in other states, they have they have incentives in, in place where um, if you want if you have batteries on your house, uh, you can you can sign up for something through the company, and they'll actually put you over during those peak times to save all customers money, but they're not having to buy the most expensive power on the grid. They'll actually just switch you over to your battery for a little while and then switch you back when you have plenty make sure you have plenty of battery left. Uh, and that that's a way that actually saves all customers. That sort of thing could also happen on the utility side of things. Um, and I think that would likely be a good thing, um, you know, from my perspective. Emmett, uh, one of the bullet points on the press release you folks sent out was, and you mentioned this earlier, peak demand reduction initiatives to minimize peak energy demand, thus lowering costs for all rate payers. Back in the 80s when I lived in northern Virginia or might have been you know, early 90s in Montgomery County, Maryland, the uh, company that I had my utilities with, I think it was Pepco at the time is what they were called, offered a 3% discount on my bill if I would allow them to cycle off my heat or air conditioning for 15 minutes during the afternoon. And, yeah. si and since I was at work and not home, I was perfectly fine with that because I could get a 3% discount on my bill, which if your bill's, you know, obviously if it's $200 a month, that's six bucks, right? But I've never been offered that by another utility since then. Is that not uniformly offered? No, it's not. In fact, that's exactly this thing. You know, we're on the cutting edge here in, in West Virginia. Uh, this is the same program exactly. So what they do, and I have this on my house uh, down here in Charleston, and they have uh, a little thing on my air conditioner that if uh, if it's a there's like six times a summer you know because that the summertime is an important time because that's when some of the rating stuff happens with utilities and so what they do is they give me forty bucks a year I think it's maybe forty or forty five and um, at, at, as long as and they interrupt six you know five or six times eight times a summer and uh, for I think it's um, twenty minutes or something like that mm -hmm. yeah and it's during the daytime or usually. So it doesn't really affect me at all, and, um, and so that's that's how it works. Yeah, and you get a little bit of money. Uh, so that that's that's, a, that's the exact program that that's referring to. I I wish they'd expand it to the program that they had that I was mentioning earlier, where you know they give you a little bit. They, they basically pay you to, uh, a lot more than that, or give you a, um, a rebate on your uh, getting batteries, so that you can they can just switch you totally off, and that would that would be a big impact for uh, all ratepayers to be able to kind of smooth the curve because it really does it got really expensive during that um that uh winter storm or winter what was it called a snap or whatever it was uh two winters ago mm -hmm. where it got really really expensive and they were saying you know curb your use and all that um having batteries that you could go to and just say okay we're gonna switch you to batteries for a minute here that would be a big uh, savings for folks because it was expensive for ratepayers. How can consumers demand some of these opportunities to save if their utility company is not offering those? Yeah, well, it, uh, the West Virginians for Energy Freedom Coalition is is the kind of, you know, this is, a, I'm biased because I think it's a, I'm part of it, and, but this is the main organization or entity that is working together to kind of help regular customers address their energy uh, costs. And so, uh, energyfreedomwv.org, go on there. We are going to be working over the coming year. That, you know, As I mentioned earlier, um, First Energy, uh, all the utilities and electric utilities in the state have to do what's called an integrated resource plan, which is basically the plan for the next five years, how you're going to meet your energy needs. We think that should include, uh, for, for Potomac Edison customers, the same programs or similar programs to what is offered in the rest of the state, where people can get uh, health becoming more energy efficient, uh, which helps all of us. So in, that would be included, among other things, energy audits. Uh, how do the those areas whose companies do provide energy audits go about getting an, an, an audit of the home? Yeah, so um, for, for AEP customers, they have a special website, uh, takechargewv.com. You go on the website, you sign up, have somebody uh, come by, they schedule an appointment, uh, I've, I've heard from the folks who do this that the the main ba uh, bar barrier is people being embarrassed about their house being messy. So don't you know if there's anybody listening and say that's for no, they'll be nervous about that. But uh, but yeah, and then they so they just come by, they look, like, they walk through your house. Takes about I would say 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe. Uh, they take some notes, they write up a report. I think they usually have a printer in their car, and they can 
print it out and uh, and tell you the specific things. They actually walked around to my house the last time I did it, uh, and they actually just changed the light bulbs for me. They because they want to see that you're actually going to use them, not just hand them to you. They actually walk around with a little ladder and, and, and put new light bulbs in for you so you start saving immediately. Yeah, I've had that done at my house. They give you a bunch of free light bulbs and a free power strip. Yeah, exactly. Right, you got one of those energy-saving power strips there. Uh, Emma, just about out of time, how can people find out more about what you're doing there to help consumers in the state? I, I, again, I think energyfreedomwv.org is the best place, or just Google West Virginia's for Energy Freedom or Facebook page place to Stay in touch, too. All right. Thanks, Emmett. Appreciate it. And don't forget that DoorDash the next time you're on the program. <laughs> I will, too. Yeah. <laughs> good talking to you, Emmett. Have a good day, sir. Yeah. Uh, Emmett Pepper, whose, whose last name sounds kind of delicious, too. There, I, I like Pepper. I'm a big fan there.